Hello everyone, I'm back. It's time for me to start the next update of my open source project. I've actually done a ton of work on this project already since the last update. It's been like, I think maybe a week, week and a half since I stopped filming part one, but already I pretty much have a fully functional, halfway decent looking app that's connected to a backend and it's got a whole workflow and we're generating proofs and we are verifying those proofs. So a lot's been done. It would have taken me um, probably a lot longer to get to this point if I hadn't already had experience with one of the main libraries that I'm using for the zero knowledge proof stuff. So that definitely sped up my process a lot. It probably would have taken me like an extra couple of weeks to figure this out if I didn't already know that, but I'll explain that more in a little bit. I will jump on and do a screen share and show you all the code. But where I have made it to now, I'm at the point that I think is probably gonna be potentially the hardest, mainly just because it's kind of a question mark for me. I need to figure out how to handle different types of input. Because remember the app is designed for people to be able to put in some type of data and generate a proof for that data. So I need to figure out what limitations I have in terms of the library, what, what it can generate from, and what constraints I therefore want to place on my users in terms of what I allow them to put in the form. It also has impacts from a UI perspective because for example, if I want them to be able to put in a date, then I'll wanna add a calendar picker, but if I want them to be able to upload a file, then I'll need a file upload widget and I'll need a way to either kind of display all the options at once or conditionally display the options based on some other selection. So there's just, it's probably the part of the process that I have the most question marks as far as how I want it to work from an MVP perspective. So right now I'm on the hard part, about to start working on that probably today. And I'm kind of excited because the hard part means also the fun part. I get to actually figure stuff out that I didn't know before. Also, I've already had some interest from some of you in wanting to contribute to this project when it's ready, which is awesome. So I will definitely, as soon as I have this in a state that's ready for contributors, I will definitely post, um, I need to think about some kind of either a sign up or some kind of like onboarding to uh, get people set up, whoever wants to help on this project. So if you're a new developer and you're looking for some experience, um, I'd love for this to be an opportunity to help people have something you can put on your, on your portfolio or on your resume or something. All right, I wanted to show you all how far I have gotten with this because I've made quite a bit of progress. This is the main page. So you can see we've got a kind of really basic layout done here. Obviously there's gonna be UI polish to do and probably gonna change up wording and stuff like that. But this is actual test data coming from the database. So we're connected to the backend. This is just a Next.js project. I have a pre-commit hooks set up to run linting and a unit test suite set up. So we've got a lot of the main stuff in place. Search doesn't work yet. That's gonna be one of the last features I come back to, I think. But we've got this set up so you can click in and we have forms for the prover and the verifier. So you can generate a new proof and when you generate it, it shows up here and then you can click on it here and input your data to see if you're correct. This is really it for the workflow of the app as far as screens and what the UI is gonna look like. So I can actually, let me just do one right now as an example, uh, just to kind of show how this works. Obviously I will do more videos later when this is done explaining kind of what this is and how it works a little bit better, more tutorial type stuff. I'm just gonna use this data because I know that's some input data that works. And as you know, we're about to be at the hard part for that. I'm gonna bring the terminal over because I actually have all of this console logging out in the terminal. So this is where we're hitting back here. This is where I'm actually using Zocrates JS in the code to generate this proof. And I, for now I left all the console logs in so you can see the steps that it takes to create the proof just because I think that that is really interesting to follow along with and see. Zocrates is a library that is made to do this 
on Ethereum. It's made to to run ZK Snarks. It's a ZK Snark toolbox for Ethereum. And so Zocrates JS is just their JavaScript library implementation of that. And so what's interesting about this is we're actually compiling a Solidity program uh, to make this run. So right here, uh, this line here, it's actually a, a, a very small Solidity smart contract that could be deployed to a blockchain. And then the Zocrates library is compiling this and using that to compute a witness, generate verification keys, and create a proof from that. And you can see the steps of all that happening here. Like, look at these huge arrays and stuff that it creates, and then we ultimately end up with the proof itself right here. And this JavaScript is a little bit fun. <laughs> For doing this um, because the the numbers that it generates, the computation output is actually the numbers are too large for JavaScript. These are 128 bit number arrays. And so I actually had to, you can end up with an output length of 38 or 39 digits, depending on the size of the input data that you put in. Um, and so I had to account for that. And then I actually had to split them split the numbers up into a number size that JavaScript could handle. So I had to splice them into three segments for both the first and second output array. So that involves some really fun little string replacement work in JavaScript and then put those back into segment one, segment two, segment three, <laughs> segment four, combine them all back into the contract. and. I know that's probably like, you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but that's fine. I'm going to, I'm actually thinking about doing a separate video, just a tutorial on how Zocrates JS works, because I feel like there's not really many videos on YouTube about that. I haven't really seen any videos, especially about the JavaScript library for this. For now, just know this was a fun time. <laughs> but if this was easy, there would be no point to build this project. So, you know, I'm glad that it's been challenging at points. And again, this is something that would have taken me a lot longer to figure out if I hadn't worked with this library previously. So because I've done stuff with this before, I was able to put this together a lot faster than what it would have, it would have definitely added a few weeks to my project build time if I didn't already know what I kind of wanted to do here. So anyway, the proof is generated. So if we actually come over to Superbase, this is our proofs table. And we can see that test proof four, it generated a new record for us here in the table. And I actually ended up adding a verification key column to the fields that I talked about in the last video that I would need to store in the database. I ended up realizing that I was missing that one and I need to store that in addition to the proof. Otherwise, this is a really simple database record. It's there if we come back to our app. I have error handling, but I need to do loading and success states still in the UI. Come back over, we can see the new proof we just created and the data was created. And then we can click on this and then put in another email here. And this doesn't matter for right now. And then as long as we put in the exact same data here, that was put in when the proof was created, we're gonna get a, a true response. If we put in any other thing, if we change one little tiny piece of this, we'll get a false response. So that's what the point of this app is. Someone could create that, generate that proof, and then anyone else could come to this page here and put in the data. And if the data they put in is wrong, they're gonna get false. If the data they put in is correct, they're gonna get true. So then once again, I have this logging out in the terminal, what it's doing. And for this endpoint, it does, it's gonna do basically the same thing. This is a service file. I broke out the Zocrates functionality into a service file, but the endpoints, here we go. But here's the prove endpoint. So it's going to take the data that we just sent from the request body, generate a proof for that so that we can get the uh, input hashes. And then it's gonna take the proof ID from right here and it's gonna grab from the database based on that ID. It's gonna pull the proof associated with the one that we're proving. And it's going to, in the service file, it's going to replace the inputs array from the database proof with the inputs array from the proof we just generated from our input. And then pass that into Zocrates to see if it gets a correct verified response and then it's going to return that back to the UI. And then again, I still need to create the success screen, but 
you get the idea. So a lot of work has already been done on this. I'm super happy with how it's coming along. And I'm now at the point where I need to start thinking about this secret data. We need to figure out exactly what types of data, how much data and all of that I want people to be able to pass in and what the limitations are of Socrates to be able to, and JavaScript really, to be able to put that into the solidity contract to be compiled to generate a proof, etc. Okay, it has been almost three weeks now that I've been working on this project and sometimes it feels like it's never going to be done. <laughs> but I also have a lot of other new projects starting to come up for my new year and I really, really want to get this done and out so it doesn't end up getting pushed to the back burner as these other things become a priority. My plan for today is to just crank on this for the entire day. It's noon right now. I have no other plans for the rest of my day. I'm gonna try to just work on this for as long as I can and see how much I can possibly get done and just really crank this out. Right now on my task board, so the reason why there's 19 things in done and 13 still to do is because I have broken out, I broke out some of these into even more tickets than the original like 26 tickets or whatever that we had when I started. So. There's a few more now, but I even think like this one here about like setting up API keys and stuff. So Vercel comes with quite a bit of DDoS and rate limiting protections out of the box. And Superbase also has a good built in role, row level um, security policies. So people can't just go deleting from the database unless they're me. So I think starting out, I'm just gonna rely on those things and have this be like a backlog ticket for maybe some of you to pick up to set up API keys and be able to better track who's using what and who's calling what. Just because I really, really want to be careful not to solve for problems that I don't have yet. I think the next thing I'm going to do is work on the loading and success states in the UI and get all of that set up. It's noon right now. I'm gonna try to sprint through this and let's see how far I can get today. It's almost 4 p.m. now and I have all of the success and loading states and error states and all of that fully working. Look at this adorable Pac-Man loading component that I found. I think it's so cute. Um, but now I'm ready to move on to making sure everything is deploying correctly and it's all working the way I want it to in the live environment. And then it is time to move on to search. These UI screens took a little bit longer than I was planning or expecting, but honestly, now that these are done, search is really the last big piece of actual functionality that we have to do. So we're starting to get close. It's 6.15 now and search is done. It turns out Superbase has really convenient search by text method built into the ORM and I was able to set up working search really quickly and easily within the hour. Now I'm just going to add a couple of unit tests. I'm not going to try to do full test coverage. I'm just going to get some tests going so it's something that people could build on. So I'm going to write some unit tests and I'll probably take a quick break and do the dishes. <laughs> All right, it's 9 p.m. I'm going to end here. This is what it's looking like. You know, I'll be the first to say I am not a UX designer by any means. So there's for sure gonna be room for improvement on that, but I think it's a pretty decent start. And that is it for the functionality. I've been working on this for about nine hours today. I'm curious when this is fully launched to add up the, uh, remember I've been tracking my hours spent in the Notion tickets. I'm curious to see how long it'll be when I add up all the hours together. But I'm really, really happy because I did manage to get most of this knocked out. So basically all I have to do now is documentation and setting this up for people to contribute. So that's really, really exciting. Thanks for following along and I will catch up with you in another video when this project is launched.